Okay, Chavre, good morning. Today is <clears throat> the fourth day of Sivan. We're in the middle of chapter 53. Today is June 10th. Ah, before we begin, count Svira Sa'imer. One second, let me get the page. Today we count, last night we counted 48. So let's count together, Chavre. Hayoim. Shmoina, Barbaim, Yain, Shahim, Shisha, Shavuis, Vishisha, Yamim, La Oimer. Today is 48 days, which is six weeks and six days of the Oimer. So that would be the last time that we're saying a blessing, we're counting. And that would mean tomorrow night is Shavuis. So I hope we're ready. But ready or not, here we come. We're, we're counting tonight. And. Yeah, and that's the last count. Okay, and today, and first of all, I just want to back up for yesterday. Forgive me, we missed a, a class yesterday. We were out of town. In the first Beis Hamikdash, the Luchais, the tablets which contained the Ten Commandments, were resting with a resting place for the Shina. We're trying to discover ways to get closer to understand a huddle a little sliver of godliness in order that we may know him and once you know the Eivishter at least obviously an extended I don't want to say superficial but is that fair to say because we can't know God in an intimate essential way because we can't know God but we want to try to have a relationship and we want to love God because that's a commandment so we're trying to discover that so this godly revelation bypassed, quote-unquote, the order of downward, gradual evolution of tzimtzumim being manifest godliness. <clears throat> Why does it say that it bypassed the tzimtzumim? Because everywhere else that God is, in this room, in your life, in every way, but you can't see God. Ah, but in the Beis Migdash, where the Luchais were, God was in a revealed state in a way that was nowhere else in the world. Now, in today's lesson, we we'll talk about in the second temple. They did not have the luchas, the tablets. The Shekhinah resided in a lower form relative to the world level. Therefore, post Beisam Migdash, which we're in now, it is manifest through the study of Halacha and the performance of mitzvahs. As we said earlier on last week, you want to connect to Hashem? Learn Taira. In the second temple, the ark and the tablets did not rest. They weren't there. These being among the five things found in the first temple that the second temple lacked. I'm going to say the Beis Hamikdash, please. Okay. So, when I, you know, when we say the 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 you know, so the rabbis of blessed memory said that the Shekhinah did not abide there. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that it didn't reside there. It just didn't reside the way it was by the first holy based on Mikdash. It was this level of Shekhinah that did not abide in the second base of Mikdash, but it was a much lower level of Shekhinah. The level of revelation that surpassed the Ishtal Shalos, to say the Ishtal Shalos in the first place on Migdash was unbelievably powerful. And the second, the lower grade. Okay. When it came to the second base on Migdash, then the Shekhinah came through the say the Ishtal Shalos, the descent of Malchus of Atzilus Vesel, Malchus of Bria. The latter Machos of Yitzira, the Bria, the Machos of Yitzira, the Tzir, the Hechel, Kachi, Kadoshim, Nasiya. And finally, it got to the point of the Kadosh Kadoshim, the Holy of Holies of Asiya, and that being the Chachma Bin Adas of Asiya. Kadosh Kadoshim, Nasiya, Hoya Mislabesh, the Kadosh Kadoshim, Shabbabes and Migda Shalamata, the Shorsa. Malchus 
And the Holy of Holies of Asiya, this world, was clothed in the Kodesh HaKadoshim of the Beis HaMikdash. In it rested the Shekhinah, meaning the Malchus of Yitzira, which was enclosed in the Kodesh HaKadoshim of Asiya. And therefore, L'chein lo yehoi arash haishum adam v'ikane sham levad koyen gadam yem v'kipurim. Therefore, because the Shechina resided in the Holy of Holies, the Kodesh HaKadoshim and the Beis HaMikdash, no man was permitted to enter there except for the whole for the Kohen Gadol on Yom Kippur. But now, since the destruction of the Beis Hamikdash, of which the of which the sanctuary was a part, Hashem resides in, where does Hashem reside? In the Kodesh HaKadoshim of Torah and Mitzvahs. That's the holy, the holiest of places today. And are you thinking in the Aran Kodesh, but it's also in Halacha, in the Torah. Also in the Aran Kodesh, I'm certain. So the Shekhinah has to reside, it says that, we, we mentioned this earlier, that the Shekhinah has to reside in the Kodesh HaKadoshim, so we said that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has but the four cubits of Allah alone. So today, the Torah rests in the Holy of Holies that connects Hashem with the world so that the holiness, the illumination of the Shekhinah, which is Kadesh and holy, meaning separated and apart from the world, should become Baruch. So we need the holy to become Baruch, to be drawn down into this world. Even though we use the, the you know, we the, the word Baruch means to bless. It's the beginning of many of the blessings, Baruch Atah Hashem, but it also means to draw down. Listen to this very powerful word. If one Jew sits and engages in Torah study, the Shechina is with him. The Shechina comes down, as it says in Bresh, in, Brach, in the first chapter of Brachas, the phrase, the Shekhinah is with him, means that although he's being, he's a person sitting in this man, in this material world, the Shekhinah is with him. So, that's right. The level of Shekhinah that's with him is, but it comes down through this order, through the Seder Ishtal Shlos, so definitely it is inferior to that of the first base of Mikdash and even the second base of Mikdash. But nevertheless, we're bringing Shekhinah down into our lives and into our world through the study of Torah. Why and how? The 613 mitzvahs of the Torah are by and large Precepts which involve action, including the gam machshava. Not just when we say action, you think of putting on fill in or putting some charity in the box. That's an action. But we're talking also about action that includes speaking and even thinking. So when you say the words, you're doing an action. You don't think of it as an action because you're not using your hands or your feet, but you're using your mouth, your lips. We discussed this recently, that you're using so many different parts of your mouth and it's, there's an action taking place. But even when you're thinking something, there's also an action. Nobody else sees it, but there's action going on in there. When you're learning something, so this is even though these mitzvahs involve thought, seeking to grasp the concepts in one study and to experience the kavanos of the Shema prayer. So, of course, you're saying the words of Shema, but also having in mind, having the proper kavana, thinking of Avas Hashem and Yiras Hashem, loving and fearing and being in awe of God, that's, the, that's in your thought process. That's the kavana. But nevertheless, this is also a conduit to bring down the Shechina, like an action mitzvah. It's been ruled that meditation has, doesn't have the same as speech, doesn't have the same power, validity, if you will. And one does not love, uh, I'm sorry, 
וכוונו לבד, עד שיוצא בסבא סוף. A person can't just think the mitzvah, he has to say it out loud with his lips, with his mouth, with his voice. The Kaimalon, the Akimas, Svasov, Havay Maisa. Moreover, it's been ruled that the motion of the lips when one is speaking is considered an action, in which case all mitzvahs involve some form of action, because when you're saying the bracha, you're doing an action. The Alta Rebbe now goes on to explain. And ask the following question. It still remains to be understood why specifically the four cubits of Allah take the place of the Kodesh HaKadoshim. Why should this not be so when a Jew studies the subject in the Torah, which is not Allah? Because if, whatever the Torah is, it should be, the Shekhinah should be drawn down to him. Why Dafka Halacha? Dayag Mitzvah Torah im Sheva Mitzvah Torah. I'm sorry. Dayag Mitzvah Torah im Sheva Mitzvah Torah Bonon. When you have 613 commandments and you add seven, it comes out to six, 20, right? And that equals the numerical value of Kesser, which is crown, which is the supernal will of Hashem. Which is clothed, which is clothed in Hashem's wisdom. So in addition to the fact that there is God's wisdom, which in its descent in the downward progression of worlds becomes, and again, it goes through all these different worlds, you know, through the, the Malchus and everything else. There's an additional quality of its being the supernal will, which is even higher than wisdom. And this is uniquely found in the Halacha and the Mitzvahs as they're expressed in the supernal will. For they, God's will and wisdom, are united with the light of the Ein Saif Baruch Hu in a perfect union. This is dafke through halacha, and further. Um, how do you translate halacha? Uh, the laws. There's a better word. Regulations. The laws, the regulations, the Torah that, the Torah that guides you. Halacha and shulchan aruch, the set table. How you should practice. I, I understand. I understand. I, I understand what you're saying. But what we're trying to say is halacha is the the myth, the, the, the parts of Torah that describe how to do a mitzvah. That's the point. Right? Further, to an earlier statement that the Torah derives from the supernal wisdom, the Altarev will now say that the oral Torah also emanates from that source, from the Kesser, the highest level. Hashem Chachma Yasad Oretz, Yitayra Shabbat Peh. Hashem founded the earth with wisdom. This refers to the Torah Shabbat the oral law. That's derived from the supernal wisdom as it states in the Zayar. The father, the Chachma, begat the daughter, meaning the Malchus, the oral law, as it is written, Malchus, the mouth, which we call the oral law. And we'll continue this. We're in the same chapter tomorrow. And the second Beisa Migdash, the takeaway for today, the second Beisa Migdash, the Luchais were not present, but the Kayyid HaShakadoshim nevertheless represented that place that Hashem would dwell in a more concentrated, more unfiltered manner, in a more concise manner, a condensed manner. Now, Today, we don't have the Beis Amigdash. We don't have the Holy of Holies. Maybe we built God willing very soon. So the sages teach that God is found in our Torah study, but specifically verbalizing it and action-based mitzvahs. And therefore, we could bring down not just, not just is it found there and not just we can connect there, but we're able to bring down the Shechina when we learn a based Torah. So... That's what Shul is all about. That's what we learn. Right, but do we daft to learn halacha? Ah, okay. So either way, the entire Shabbat Peh as well. So let's learn Chassidus all night. Have a good day, everyone. Um, all the best. Now I want to